Hello friends, this video on DNF block elements part 24 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Let's talk about the complex ions. The complex compounds are actually formed when the metal ions, typically in this case my transition metals, they bind with numbers of anions or neutral molecules. Right? And they bind to form a complex species. And this complex species has some characteristics. This one, if you see, is hexa aqua copper. One copper with six water molecules. Okay. Another example of complex ions can be Fe, Cn, six, three minus, or Fe, Cn, six, four minus or Cu NH3 4 2 plus. So here this NH3 Cn minus these are all ligands. Okay. And these transition metals actually form large number of complex compounds. Why? The reason is why large number of compounds. The first reason is size. Size is small. For the transition metal size is small. Next is the ionic charge is high. Ionic charge is high for transition metal. Okay, and third is the d orbital electrons. D orbital electrons are there, so we have s and d orbitals electron, more electrons for bonding. Okay, and these d orbitals electron actually accept the lone lone pair of other group. So even if, even if it has vacant d orbital, it is useful. Even if it has some electrons, it is useful, right? It accepts the electrons donated by the group okay and this ions with such characteristics having strong tendency to attract with ligands such as water ammonia cn minus all of which have highly electronegative atom and unshared etc okay see what i'm saying is these ions this this metal ions for example metal ions these metal ions have tendency to interact with these ligands ligands for example my ammonia cn minus water molecules so these ions have tendency to attract uh, form bond with these ligands okay and these ligands actually have highly electronegative atom for example if you see nitrogen oxygen these are all highly electronegative atom and these have unshared electron pairs also if you find uh, actually draw the shape you'll see that they have unshared electron pairs Okay, these metals with positive charge or metal ions interact with ligands. These ligands are ammonia, Cn minus water molecule. And these ligands have the highly electronegative atom and unpaired electron, and these bind together and they form complex ions. Okay. Now the next important part of the D block element is the catalytic properties. See, what are catalysts? Catalysts are nothing but any substance which accelerates the rate of reaction. For example, this is a biological catalyst. This catalyst, the green one is my catalyst. This catalyst provides a site where the reaction can happen. It forms an intermediate complex. And with this, the product is easily formed. This was my reactant. And you get product using this catalyst because this catalyst is not being used, but it helps in providing the space surface where the reaction can happen. And also sometimes an intermediate complex is formed it's easy to break okay now the transition metals i'm saying they have catalytic property why see there are several reasons the first is the transition metals have ability to adapt to variable oxidation state this variable oxidation state is one of the key reason we'll discuss these in details now okay second one it forms complex you just see and these complex you can also form unstable intermediate complex. The way we have seen this un unstable intermediate complex, it forms. The third is it has partially defilled orbital, partially filled d orbital, and this d orbital actually this provides active site. This provides active site and also the large surface area for adsorption or I can say 
adsorption. Adsorption of what? Adsorption of reactant molecules. And that's why if you see the uh, in hydrogenation, we use platinum, but we make sure this platinum is very uh, minute. I mean, very crushed, it's crushed so that, or it's powdered so that you have more surface area. You have anything, you crush it, you make it powder, the effectively you end up increasing the surface area. Right? So this has this property because of these three properties actually, these D block elements have catalytic property. Okay. Let's see the examples of this. For example, the first one, the variable oxidation, oxidation state. If you see Fe3 plus, this has capability of converting it to Fe2 plus easily. And this catalyzes the reaction between iodide, iodide and per sulfate. We will show you, for example, you, have, you take Fe3 plus, you react with I minus. What you get is this. The iron is reduced, variable oxidation state, and this reduced iron actually react with per sulfate and gives back Fe3 plus, and you get SO4 2 minus. Now if you see you started with Fe3 plus you get back Fe3 plus. Thus Fe3 plus is nothing but a catalyst. But because Fe3 plus could actually change its oxidation state easily, it acted as a catalyst. If you talk about these two complex, unstable, intermediate and it uh, gives active site. So a good example is uh, iron. Iron is actually finely divided iron is used as catalyst for manufacturing ammonia or ammonia for production in Haber's process. In Haber's process, we use finely divided actually. Finely divided. Why finely divided? Because if you finely divide uh, uh, any metal, you increase the surface area and you want more and more surface area where reactant can be adsorbed and the reaction can take place. Another again, the nickel powder. Nickel, this is also in powder form is used as a catalyst in hydrogenation of unsaturated hydrocarbon. We have seen that. Platinum, platinum again, the finely divided platinum is used as catalyst to manufacture nitric acid by HNO3, by Ostwald process. This Ostwald process we produce nitric acid and that we use platinum as catalyst. There are so many examples, B2O5, vanadium pentoxide. This is also used to manufacture sulfuric acid where van vanadium pentoxide is my catalyst. Okay. So as I told that these provide surface area, these catalysts because these catalysts now has the D orbital and S orbital. So these D and S orbital electrons actually it helps in binding the reactant to this uh, surface area and with this the concentration of reactant in the surface area increase since the concentration is increased now at some locate, uh, locale I mean some local place for example this is my catalyst at this if I increase the concentration of reactant why because this reactant forms bond with this uh, d orbital since the reaction of uh, uh, the concentration of the reactant has increased in this area the reaction is faster okay so that's the role of catalyst. This was the picture for the hydrogenation. If you see, this is hydrogen. This is a nickel uh, catalyst. This is the nickel catalyst and hydrogen bonds are broken and this nickel provides a surface area where this reaction can take place and hydrogenation take place. So if you want more details on hydrogen, you can watch my videos where we have discussed the process of hydrogenation in more detailed way. Now we'll talk. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch more videos, attend free online tests, get free study materials, find tutors and mentors and much more. Thanks once again. For the trend